So, with the recent announcement of Riot's MMO resetting, and with the nerfs to the battle pass, of course, there had to be a third piece of news that would give us a trinity of drama. And so, last week, a new piece of information circled League's community. One that raised quite a lot of eyebrows, because nobody understands why it happened. It came out of nowhere, seemingly without a reason, and it's targeting people you would not expect. So, it all started when Spider-X noticed that Riot updated their policy. It wasn't something that would be publicly posted anywhere. So it's hard to confirm where the news originally came from. But apparently, some writers mentioned it on streams, after which those clips were taken down. So now we can't even trace it back. However, because they were taken down, that means what they said is probably true. Anyway, the new policy is simple. If a rioter wants to stream a Riot game, they are not allowed to monetize it. If they want to stream and monetize other games, that's totally fine, they can do whatever they want. But they cannot directly earn revenue by streaming a Riot game. Of course, as soon as this piece of news dropped, there was a riot. Quite ironically. Because Riot has a lot of devs who stream their games and are quite successful at doing so. And now people are worried that their favorite devs will stop doing this. So why on earth would Riot do something like this? Well, we don't really have a clear answer because all of this is an internal policy. But we can make an educated guess based on what happened in the past. And oh boy, are the reasons weird. So let's start by whom this is most likely targeting. There are two main outliers. August, who streams League and who loves talking about the champions he designed while doing so, his streams are honestly doing really well. And Mordog, the head of TFT, who very often ends up being the leading streamer of the TFT category. The reasons why he's so big is, one, he is very knowledgeable on TFT, given the fact that he's kind of designing it, and so people go to his streams for his unique knowledge. But also two, he is just an entertaining guy, and even if he wasn't streaming TFT, his streams would do well. Which is where the internet went wild and the theories started pouring in. Now, first of all, I don't believe it is primarily Riot's goal to cut off this kind of revenue for their devs. Because perhaps they would feel like their devs are leeching off of the success of their games. If this is the primary reason for this, this is very stupid. Because in today's day and age, developers streaming their games is a whole new thing that only just started booming. I mean, it was a thing for the last three years or so. But especially after Pirate Software got discovered, this entire category just went up. So now, streaming your own game is just the best kind of free marketing you can get. However, that may not necessarily be the case for games that are already big. Which is where theory number one comes in. Rioters are suppressing the League of Legends content creator scene. This is a bit of a weird one, but surprisingly it has some solid ground. In the case of games such as League of Legends or TFT, the audience is already big and it sprawled its own ecosystem of content creators. These would be people who stream or make videos about Riot's games. And that's without being affiliated with Riot in any way. This is important because it would suggest that you are streaming this game not because it is a good game, but because you are connected to it in some way. But honestly, in my opinion, if a writer steps in and starts streaming their game, it's not like they are gonna diminish the work of everyone else. In their case, people might watch them for their unique knowledge. But even there, one might argue that people would be watching the dev instead of a new creator that would be making guides or stuff. Regardless, the real solid ground of this theory is placed elsewhere. Notice that, from what we know, it seems like this policy is targeting streaming specifically. YouTube is seemingly not affected, so writers can still likely monetize their videos. Although remember, this is not confirmed. But if that's the case, then it would strongly suggest that Riot doesn't want the writers to cannibalize off of their own potential creator scene. Remember, unlike YouTube videos, streaming is incredibly competitive. 
you can only ever watch one streamer at a time. So if you are watching a writer, you are not watching the normal content creators. And when you go to Twitch, 90% of all the people swarm around the biggest streamers. Because bigger number likely means they are good for a reason. Unless they are botting. Well, and guess what happens when a writer pops up in the top spot? Their viewership snowballs while everyone else in the content creator scene freezes up. Of course, there are many variables included in this. But in general, one could see this as the writers cannibalizing off of the content creator scene. Because to be honest, when it comes to big games, having a natural content creator scene is very important. League started with amazing content creator scene and Fortnite became big because of it too. So it is possible that Riot is aware of this and they don't want to fill their scene with their own employees. Though what's funny about this one is that, yes, while removing the monetization will make writers want to stream their games less, it will not remove them all. And so some writers might keep doing that for fun. So in this case, this solution achieved exactly nothing. And you'll kinda see that this is the case for all the theories. Which is why this entire policy just seems dumb. But at least in this specific case, it does solve one thing. Competing interests. If a writer earns enough money while streaming, they may not have the same motivation to perform well at their job. I mean, this is literally the case for every streamer ever. The moment they start picking up, they will focus more on the streams, less on their actual job. And even here, when it comes to the writers, it would be like having two separate jobs. So as bad as it may sound, Riot might be trying to keep their productivity high. And let me tell you, just saying this aloud sounds sketchy. But alas, there is one more part to this. When organizing events for your game, it is difficult to let the community shine when a writer is stealing their spotlight. This is an issue that apparently appeared in the past. But honestly, I don't think that one would be that big of a deal. Although, all of this is also connected to theory number two. Just like every human being ever, writers too say dumb things sometimes. Look. Everyone says dumb things. Me included. People try to cancel me twice over things I didn't mean because my English isn't perfect because I'm a humble European. Can you tell based on my accent? But anyway, if you go through the history of writers who streamed League, you may find a few who left Riot and pursued their career in streaming. In a way, and I know this is a very weird word to use, but they abuse their spot at the gaming company to gain leverage when it comes to their social media influence. So it is possible that Riot doesn't appreciate when people use the company as a stepping stone to get better careers. Although I do believe this one has an additional layer. Because while they were still at Riot, some of these streaming rioters said some very questionable things on camera. And I mean, things that may be on the edge of being illegal. And again, I understand that it may happen to everyone once in a while. I don't mean the illegal stuff, I mean saying dumb things. But when you are in the spotlight of a company you are working for, people will connect the dumb statements with the company. Unfortunately, someone like Freak suffered from this heavily. He didn't really say dumb things, but he said things that the community didn't agree with. He got bullied for that because internet is the internet. And guess who Freak was connected to? If you multiply this by the number of streaming rioters, you may suddenly see the company's motivation to try and suppress this. I mean, this is also why Riot is so careful to put any references to content creators into their games. It's because if those people end up doing something stupid in the future, Riot still gets directly affiliated with them. This is why companies are removing skins left and right after creators have their drama. And this is why, before Riot considered naming a character after me, we had a few friendly chats where we just talked about stuff. Because they had to be sure I am a normal human being and not a crazy person. I think I tricked them pretty well. I mean, imagine if I had some big drama now. Surely that's not gonna happen. 
Riot would have to wipe my name from the Ruined King from Legends of Runeterra. And worst of all, my name is in the book. That would be a lot of book burning. Theory number three. The legal risks. In the past, Mordo confirmed that he is no longer allowed to look at fan-made TFT sets. You see, this was a fun activity for the entire TFT community. People would make up entire sets of TFT units, complete with their abilities and tuning, and Mordog would look at them and tell people why some things would work and why others wouldn't. Of course, all of this was cool to see from the developer's perspective. But unfortunately, this carried a legal risk with it. After looking at a fan-made set, if later Riot turned out to make a similar kind of unit in TFT, the fan-made concept of that unit would have a very tiny leverage to accuse Riot of stealing their idea. It is likely they wouldn't win much if this actually got to the court. But there was a very tiny risk, and so of course Riot wanted to avoid this. And so Mordog was asked not to do that anymore. With that, we can assume that every Riot game can run into similar issues. What if a writer streams a game and someone suggests a new feature? If it is a quality of life feature, then that's totally fine. But it's not really if there is any kind of creative input. If a fan suggests a new champion, as an example, and later Riot makes a similar champion, even if on accident, suddenly the legal side may run into obstacles. Perhaps an even better example would be people suggesting skins. Those are purely creative and Riot would be accused of stealing there, even though they are still very likely to win a case like this. Which once again could be a reason for Riot to try and suppress their developers getting onto social media. Which again could be a reason for Riot to try and suppress their own developers going onto social media with their own creative ideas. And finally, similar to the theory about saying dumb things, there is also theory number four. With the constant teasing from fans, it is very easy to accidentally leak something. And so Riot might be playing this purely defensively. Now I'll be the first one to admit that, uh, yes, I may have made a video or two in the past successfully predicting content in the future based off of a tweet as an example. So take it from me, if you really dig into what writers are saying and you line up the dots and you line up the dates, it is somewhat easy to predict what kind of content is about to come. For example, one big mystery that's in the air right now is the mention that 2025 will change League of Legends forever. So it is possible that TFT is getting entire new game mode similar to something like what happened with TFT, which also started as a game mode and then it was turned into a separate game. And that would all line up with the current trend that is happening around games right now. It is games taking their working engines and turning them into separate games for entire new audiences. TFT did it, Fortnite is doing it now. And WoW recently pulled it off too. And now it seems like Riot may go for it again. Anyway, to go back onto the main topic. Leak is notorious for constantly dealing with leaks. Most of which come from either the Eastern servers or somehow there is still some kind of insider agent in Brazil. But it just might be the case that Riot is finally trying to reduce the amount of leaks. And especially since they confirmed that they are working on multiple new games in the background, they might be taking the defensive stance here. But that is just the four main theories that are circling around right now. Of course, it is also definitely possible that Riot might also just want to hold control over their employees, which circles back to the conflicting interests. And it is entirely possible that Riot doesn't want their employees to stream because there is the risk of them leaving the company. After which, of course, they would have to hire new talents. And after all the layoffs, that would be quite awkward. And yes, I do believe that the real reason for all of this to be happening is likely a combination of everything we mentioned. I don't think it's just writers using the company as a stepping stone, or the risk of leaking, or the risk of legal trouble, or the risk of saying something stupid. I think it's all of these combined. 
Which is funny because by taking away the monetization, you're not taking away the streams, you're just giving them less of a motivation. So this new policy achieved exactly nothing. 